Welcome to another episode of Max Ideas, where my ideas from my head get put onto paper. I would strongly, strongly recommend that you watch the episode that I made on the Max Retro Ride first, where I talk about hooking two of these Type 1s together and um, doing all this stuff. Um, I would suggest watching that first because this pretty much directly relates to it and I was going to talk about it in the last episode but then it just started getting really long so I decided you know what it's going to be its own episode. It is about a transit museum. Now New York City among many others but the one that I know the most is New York City. New York City has a transit museum. It's located at one of their train stations and if you go down there they store trains down there that have been, well, they've been retired for decades. I'm talking they were last used for normal passenger service back in the day in the 60s or early 70s, um, if not even older. And so those trains are just sitting down there. And you can go down there and you can go check them out. Um, and, of course, New York, well, it's a subway, so you go down to the station. But it doesn't have to be that way. Now... With New York, they also will run trips. They call them nostalgia trips. And they run these, or sorry, nostalgia trains. And they run these trips kind of like what I was talking about with the retro ride. Weekends during summer, some weekends, and during the months of December. That would be one month, so the month of December. Um, and they would run these, these trains, and people would flock to these stations. I'm going to show you a video in a little bit of just how many people there are at these stations, because it's crazy. I said it in the last episode, too. People like old trains. I mean, it's such a true statement. The thing is, everywhere that I know of where there's a transit museum of some kind, including the one that we have in near Salem that used to have our uh, Portland's old council crest cars among plenty of other kinds of cars uh, street cars and trolleys and stuff anyway I don't hear about that thing doing bad on business the transit museum tons of people flock to those when there's events it is so crazy to watch videos people are all out there filming you've got like 20 people lined up on the edge of the station platforms bare minimum just filming the whole trains go by and inside the trains Everyone's packed like sardines because they wanted to go on the old trains. So this is, of course, not my video, but this kind of just goes to show you how many people there are. And see, they put these little signs in the trains that say, oh, this is car 1300, built in 1936. These train cars were heavily restored. Welcome aboard the city, the subway car type, served New York City commuters from 1935 to 1977. Now, take a look at how many people there are here, filming it and doing all that stuff. It's crazy. Again, I've said it a billion times, but people like old trains. And so, people flock to these things here. So now, here's my idea. The museum itself, there would be a Max Museum of some kind. And it would hold all the retired trains. Now, 2022 or 2023 should be when all the Type 1s have completely retired. Now, you again, you'd have to keep several of these and you could store them in the Transit Museum. Where would that be? Well, you have three options at least three options. Well, you might have four options. Number one, Ruby Junction, the original yard. To me, this makes the most sense because Ruby Junction is part of the original route from Gresham to Portland. It was the original train yard and so it would be the perfect place to keep them in case you want to do these retro ride events. The second place would be, well, Almonica, the other yard. It, it would make sense there too because what you could do, you could have some sort of visitor area where you could have people go in and there'd just be this little building of some kind where you'd see the trains. And again, in these museums, I didn't really talk about it, but you would be able to see the trains, you'd be able to go into the trains, 
they would have signs like that saying, oh, this is car number 109. Um, this train car was built and entered service in 1986, or whatever. Um, then, outside the train, next to the train, you'd have like this bench, like a table of some kind, that would have old radio equipment, or buttons, and switches, and old boards and stuff from these trains. And um, you'd be able to mess with those. They might not do anything, but you could mess with the switches on them, or, you know, press all the buttons, mess with the radio use the, move that um, handle for the trains to go forward or whatever you wanted to do really and you could just have those all sitting right next to the train. Um, you could have little brakes like the, what the track brake looks like or what the wheel trucks look like or all that stuff. Um, so that would be, that's my idea. Your third option of where you could have the, have it would be probably the least likely, but it hasn't been built yet, so that's why I have this idea. It'd be the um, the Hall Boulevard yard that's supposed to be built when the Green Line gets extended out to Bridgeport Village. Um, there's going to be the third train yard being built there off of Hall Boulevard. And since it hasn't been built yet, you could reserve an area just for a little transit museum thing. But again, because the Type 1s will never run on that line, I'm not sure that's the best idea. That is a very weird thing to think about. The Type 1s will never get to go through that area of track, because that's supposed to be around 2027, four years after the Type 1s are retired. And considering the lifespan of the vehicles, well, if the Type 2s began to enter service 11 years after the Type 1s did, well, give another 11 years, we're only up to 2034. That's not that far into the future. And here's the thing, by 2034, all the trains, I mean, if you have a transit museum, now the Type 2s could be a part of the transit museum. And then, you know, 10 years after, well, not even, 7 or 8 years after that, your Type 3s would start to enter the museum. And then, in the 2040s, our Type 4s and 5s to, into the 2050s, I mean, that's crazy. And other people, including me, are going to miss these vehicles because, well, I've been riding these trains my whole life. And these trains are very nostalgic for a lot of people. The Type 1s, 2s, 3s, they all are. Um, but especially the Type 1s because they don't really look that much different than they did on the first day. But, um, you know, the, your average commuter that doesn't know too much about these trains probably won't even notice when the Type 1s actually fully get left out from service. But I will, and I want to be able to see them, because, well, I've been on these for my whole life. There are Portlanders who have been on these things for 30 plus years, and just to have them gone. And then we don't know what's being done with them. And so to have a special transit museum where you could store the trains for people to see, and then have that museum operate retro ride trains, which I talked about in the last episode, I think it would be perfect. Well, this video was a little bit shorter than some of my others. Um, I thank you for watching this video, if you have, versus if you have not. <laughs> um, and I'd invite you to check out some of the other videos I have on my channel. I have more ideas going up next week. I'll see you soon.